Hello, please leave a like if you like this game. Thank you, bye bye. It helps me greatly know to which games to play for you guys. Okie dokie, thank you, bye bye. Hello, this is some Shibira Station. It's a full motion video game. Yeah, it's a nice memory. Oh, it's one of those ones. I think. It's... Yeah, it's like. You can pay people and they can take your hostage and try to pretend to be. But I would like to have a look at Ooh. Looks like a small explosion or something. Is it real? Hang on, I'm just adjusting my chair. Adjusting myself in the chair or whatever. <sighs> and I really hope this doesn't have any music in it, because I can't adjust any music in it. I've been hit with a lot of copyright crap. Should basically be able to play a game with that. As long as it's not yet real. Um, uh, okay. As you play through the game, the various mechanics will be explained. Cool. In part two, you follow the stories of multiple protagonists at once. Your decision, in, your decision, in fact, matters as you read the story. What does the day hold in store? Their fate is in your hands. Hopefully, you can see them all through to the end. To start, you have two characters, Shinya Kano and Hachi Edo. Let's begin by checking out Kano's story. Okay. Uh, this is my first time playing this game, so. Hey. Hello. Just two more minutes to go. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, the PS1 does have one of the fastest Solid State drives there is. Watch that. I should have just pushed the button. Just two minutes to go, Shinya Kenna noted the time again on his watch showing as at a slow creep of the second hand. Uh, where's the second hand? Uh, time was 9.59 or oh, 9.58 a.m. Furrows of condemnation increased his forehead. Well, he was nervous, but he knew better than to expect everything to go smoothly. Keeping a level head was proving rather difficult. There was no room for failure. <laughs> Lives were on the line here. Oh, beast. He eyed his surroundings. Was the perp really going to show up? Lots of different feet. When? Where would he be coming from? How would he make his approach? Where's Brittany? The Shibiru Scrum was as packed as a bar. 
throng of people crossing this way and I'm blissfully unaware oh, of the dozens of detectives <laughs> sorry the dozens of detectives hidden in its midst all right another minute and a half hello Kino. Kino glanced down at his watch yet again a mere 30 seconds had passed. Detective Kendra had been with the enforcement arm of Shibuya's, Shibuya's crew of her sector for a year now, but he had never been part of an operation this big before. He eyed the young woman standing beside the statue up ahead. Looks like a cat statue. Uh, she was small enough to get lost in the crowd, and she carried a nondescript attaché case. Hello. It's me. Sorry. It's me. Oh, I'll probably say that wrong. It's 19. The tissue case at hands contained a full oh, 50 million yen in cash. I don't know what the, what the denomination of that is. Australian dollars or American dollars. But, yeah, probably a lot. <laughs> Yesterday, her twin sister Maria had been kidnapped. This was the ransom payment. The corporate had called her Tommy last night at home, referring to her by name and telling her to wait by the statue of. Oh, I forgot to the button to before I could read it. <laughs> it was almost time that nothing happened. She looked up how expensive those watches, but it's. Those Brit, I'm probably saying, I'm saying that name wrong. Breckling. <clears throat> My brother probably got one. Ah. Kano was staring fixedly at the second hand of his watch, but a homeless man sitting on the side of the moment just loud enough for him to hear. But, come on, Kano, quit looking at your watch, Robert. Oh, he's probably a detective. What? If the kidnapper sees you, Keno tried to look nonchalant as he lifted his eyes. But the scrubbing cab of character continued. You're too nervous, just relax already. You're the one acting suspicious, said Sayama. Sayama. Keno frowned. Why would some homeless guy be talking to me? Yuri said Sayama. Was well, a senior officer of the Silver Shibuya's Precinct Criminal Affairs, which is five years older than Kino. Some words and phrases in the text appear blue. Ooh. They are called tips. Press square to underline a tip, then press X. This will let you read some extra info related to the word or phrase. There are tips containing general knowledge, the ones that are. Oh. How do I know which ones are the things? I don't know. Specifically, they are marked with a magnifying glass and for it, uh, to it, respectively. Tip. Oh, is it tip? Oh, is it tip? Oh, I'm not going to read all that. I'm not going to read all that. Uh, he always has a little lens one of the sizes. He goes off on a job, but... Oh. I just tried to push the... Oh. Square button again, but... Mm, the underlines it, but it didn't work. But word around the station was that he just liked playing this up. Hey, pal. Spare some change. So, see my lunch that he's been in ruffles and pushed the kid off. Hey. Not my ma. Pretty leave the past, so see how mom reached pretty badly. <laughs> well, ain't so suspicious now, huh? He clung to Kenner and went with more camaraderie, despite the younger man's attempts to pull away. Come on, Sasyama. Cut it out. Sasyama's life confidence rattled Kano's nerves. Of course there was good reason for that confidence. 
This was Kano and Sasyama's jurisdiction, but they were positioned a good distance from where the handoff was to take place. Ah, so Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So they're in front of a poster of that statue where the girl had, was told to be. Okay. Was surrounded by a elite limited. One of them was HQ Special Investigation. Well, some of the two of all tips will appear in a single screen. Press X. Uh, Oh, to change which words are aligned. I like that. I like that. <sighs> you wish to Then press X, continue pressing this or press that. So, it's not the radio, really sorry. Oh, yeah. Moya E? How'd you call? The green rock. Oh yeah. Next one was just there to provide backup if the kids ever turned into flee. Look, just try to relax, we'll be fine. The see how I gave him a wink. Winky! <laughs> a moment later, the radio squawked in Kano's ear. <sighs> Alright everyone, it's time. Keep your eyes open. The voice coming in through the earpiece was Koji Kuzi. Good day. I don't know. HQ Operations Director. Oh, you already know that one. Until last year, he'd been the Shibuya's precinct head detective and Kiro's supervisor. We don't know when the perp is going to make contact. Don't let your guard down. <laughs> Kuzai's low, gravelly voice echoed in Kiddo's ear. <laughs> you don't sound too worried, Kuzai. Kino winked win win at Sasyama's words. How oh, could the man be told on show up? They have put in time. Had come and gone, someone's. something should be happening. Wap! <laughs> must be a Japanese thing. Wap! Must, must, must be like a slap. Kapow. Kiro smacked himself in the thigh to release a little tension. The sound was louder and he had a tennis so this, The suit hit the muscular physique. It did little stab of noise. He needed to stay focused. Very cool direction at any moment. The department handled abduction cases according to a certain standard investigation procedure. This were, was it an attempt of eggs or money or was the vote of something personal? The answer to that question determined how they deal with the criminal. And based on the investigation team initial findings, this time around they probably weren't dealing with a professional kidnap. Why do they say that? Still, in all likelihood, there was someone with quite a long rap sheet. And yet, how do they really know that? Mm -hmm. Probably someone who knew the family, but so far they had few leads on who might bear such a grudge. With the situation so unclear, the plan was to apprehend whoever came to make the handoff on site. If the culprit ran with the money, there'd be no guarantee of the hostages' well being. <clears throat> Still nothing. Sasyama muttered. Broke in the voice spiking 
into an excited chirp. Subject is a young male in his twenties, wearing a bandana and an orange hoodie. Jose, no only common stomach was now squawking like an excited child. And it happened when he got particularly worked up. Kato and Sasyama Rio steeled themselves. Ooh. They can see the subject now. A 20 something male nonchalantly approached Tommy to talk to her. Alright, people. Be ready to grab this guy. Kuzay was stationed in the mobile command in the not far from the intersection. Keep intense on the situation via video surveillance from the camera team. The young man started speaking enthusiastically to Hitomi. The detective watched uncertain. Look. The, the detective watched uncertain. Mm. Was this really the kidnapper? They got... They got to him. Kenna took a step forward and the tennis head. The situation still wasn't entirely clear. Uh, we'll change the lives of other people in, in addition to changing your own factors. To make your choice, up and down on the linear, with fingers ready. Then press X. Okay, the current choice will not impact. Oh, well, I thought it would. I thought it, said, I thought it said that it would. The other protagonist. Uh, I think we still live together. He knew to get a better look at things. The new cover held a bundle of letter-sized papers, which he showed to Hitomi as he went on talking. He tried to hand her one of the papers, but she pointed, pointedly ignored him. Under her, the man kept trying to foist it off on her. Hitomi, Hitomi refused to respond, becoming as motionless as the statue of Hachiro Echiko behind her. Maybe he was like one of those ones selling those newspapers. I feel it's like like a newspaper that or a magazine that the the you know, the poorer people try to you know, sell on the streets so they can make some money. I forget the name of the magazine. And finally the man gave up and walked away. I guess it wasn't him. Felt, but maybe it was one of them. And he was checking out the situation. Kenneth felt the tension of the moment linger in his spine. Guy must have been hitting on her, so Siamma muttered. I mean, she's pretty cute and all. He had a point. Oh, of course. Something in Cecilia's voice made Kenneth break himself. She's got nothing on my... Nichan. Oh. Channels, that's the other wife. They got married this last month. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, married life is the best. You gotta hurry up and give it a try for yourself. This was Sasyama's favorite topic lately, and Carol was getting more and more fed up with it. Sasyama, come on, just knock it off, okay? The phrase has become a common refrain of his since his father's partner them. Fine, fine, let's talk about your girlfriend then. <coughs> huh? Now you can't be serious. The silver ground in close again. What you like? We're not having this conversation. Kate and Mother's looking away. Oh, come on. The silver city time on Kenner's just still playing the homeless troublemaker. Show me your phone. Let me see your lock screen. Huh? The shiver poured on the phone. You got a picture of your girl on your lock screen, yeah? I do not. I, I do not. We did. She was scared. 
not not you. It was scary how the on the mark the same as his uh he comes out we're in the middle of an investigation. And still the best as same as Trevor and he plucked the phone from Kato's pocket. He first crunched up with astonishment as he looked at the lock screen and the like, what the heck is this? It's not. Eat that my semi and I got the armor. I don't know the number that is. You had to bite the bullet. Where's someone playing that? No, that's my girlfriend. Her name's Ruby and she's the same as Kenny Ball. They told me this ain't my semi and I got the armor. The famous actress because this. Right here is the same as Nakahama. That's said, you sly old dog trying to make you like your dating my semi and Nakahama. I'm not mean, I guess Ruby does kind of look like her. The semi went out of the Ugh. Ruby, you really think I'm gonna fall for that? There's nothing to fall for, I swear. The semi scout looks in. Alright, man, why don't you marry her? Came in the semi, ah, but he has no answer. The truth was, he would have happily married her already, but no obstacles that need to be overcome. Okay, please have over. Let's focus on the job. The same I packed up Kendall's phone. Turned his gaze back to Tommy. Kendall let out a quick uneasy sound. Uh, he showed a dip your the baby, so the was trying to leave him a bit. I would tell you, baby, he should be grateful. But now, it's a little bit fast since the guy with the papers had gone away. <sighs> he appeared at Hanoi. The strain of her face was visible. Uh, in addition to the weight of the attaché case itself, the 5,000, uh, yeah, 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 close to 6 kilos. I said I was meant to be getting tired. So she refused to set the case down. He wasn't taking a chance with it since alive. Save again. The kidnapping had just begun the name for Rat and Meow. This is MPD Dispatch. The Shibuya Precinct has reported missing class believed to be an abduction subject to Maria Sova. And then he was going to see the DLL data. Near campus, a man was allegedly seen posing in the economy by all officers in the vicinity report to the seat at once. Kane and Sociala have been working on burglary case in Gino Bay's 5th district where they got the call to arrive at the LM Diner at 7 15 pm. At roughly the same time, several other officers showed up to secure the area. Walking off entrance to nearby roadways and monitoring the surrounding establishments. Inside the restaurant, Kino and Tsuyama were met by the girl who reported the kidnapping. It was the victim's twin sister, Itobi. Could you tell us about when Maria was taken? Staring from. That st st started from the very beginning. Kino started keeping his voice low. I, my sister and I, were supposed to go to a party together today. I said we were trembling, her voice hoarse. Yee! But I messed up the time. I showed up right at seven, an hour later than I was supposed to. So Bray had gone alone to the party, a mix of locals and exchange students. Tommy arrived late and showed up just in time to glance out, out through the restaurant window to see her sister getting shoved into the car. She described the vehicle as a blue station wagon of Japanese make. Why? Why would something like this happen to her? Tommy held back her tears, but she was shaking all over. Did you get a look at the kidnapper? Yes, it was a man, middle-aged. There was another witness, Leland Palmer. He had done himself as a lecturer at his stomach at Maria's school. I saw her too. Like, it's Tommy says. I heard a Tommy cry out, and so I up went to the window to look, and. 
<sighs> His Japanese was halting because he hadn't been in the country very long. And I think that maybe the kind of other working alone. Leyland explained that he'd seen the man shove her in the back of the seat and then clamber into the driver's seat. If he hadn't accomplished, wouldn't they have been, been driving? Neither the time nor Leyland had gotten a look at the suspect's face. Kato was in the others who had been looking at her. Other potential witnesses. Police phone rang. It was Hoshiro Kajawa, one of the senior detectives. They sent a task force for the investigation. Get back on the station once. Get back to the station once. You have a handle on the situation there. Barely well, half an hour had passed between the time the kidnapping was reported and the time the task force began operation. Then Kano and Tatsuyama got back to the precinct station. Kuze was already arriving, arrived from HQ. He informed them that a, a response team had been formed to investigate the victim's home. Kano could feel the peculiar tension in the air. Unfamiliar M MPD detectives scurried to find to and fro around the Shibuya officers. He pulled one of them aside to get a quick update. An hour and hour had passed since the kidnapping. There had been now uh, one development. The perpetrator had now made a threatening call to the victim's home. He said the following Tomorrow, 10 a.m., by Hachiko in Shibuya. Have the sister Tommy bring 50 billion yen. If not, the girl's life is forfeit. Kajima from the precinct was put on the response team, along with detectives from everywhere elsewhere who received special training in abduction cases. Normally, a local precinct detective wouldn't have gone undercover in a victim's home. Kuze, however, had decided that having a knowledgeable local was crucial and had sent Kajima along. The detectives disguised themselves as delivery people and movers to make their way inside around without arousing suspicion. Arriving there at 8.30. The response team had, response team had come prepared to run a trace if the kidnapper contacted the family a second time. But there were no further calls. Hmm. Interesting. Kano had checked his watch again, 20 minutes has now passed since the time designated for the ransom handle. The kidnapper had yet to appear. Crap, you think we might have spooked him? He wondered aloud. You don't witness it. <laughs> hey, stay calm. This him must scan the passing throng. He's just playing with us. Why this guy haven't picked this place? Can't avoid the question he'd been asking himself ever since he'd heard the cadaver's demands. So she must shrug, figure this buzz. He must want to blend in with the crowd, now the money and disappear before everyone knows he's there. Would be my guess. In that case, why not pick Shinkuko or Giza? The big crowd just didn't benefit the kidnapper after all. It also allowed the police to use the sea of people to conceal their own operation. Right now, there were 50 detectives stationed within a 50 meter radius of where Tommy stood. The kidnapper would be taking a major risk if his plan was to nab the ransom money and run. <sighs> That's what bothered Kano. Any criminal with half a brain would know better than to do a hand up in front of a chico. You're overthinking everything, pal. So Siama grumbled. No, I'm not. Kenno reached into the pocket, into his pocket, and pulled out his notepad. This was Kenno's. <laughs> oh dear. I must just be a Japanese thing. But, <clears throat> it's more of a gay thing here. 
This was Kano's dick diary, which he always kept close at hand. Sasuma rolled his eyes. That thing again. Kano ignored him, flipping through the notepad. I don't want to say gay, but I'm not, not, not of hearing about gays. It's just, yeah. Nothing against gays. Whatever. Um, oh, there it is. I can't see any dicks in that diary. <laughs> hmm. Dick dictum. Hashtag 89. The more irrelevance, the more irre ir irrelevant something seems, the more relevant it's bound to be. It was a favorite saying with Kazuyo Tatiano, Tatiano, an assistant in terms from the Shibuya precinct. Tatiano was the kind of thing that Kano inspired to be. For the current operation, he'd been placed in charge of Indomie's personal safety. He was in position to defend her as soon as the ransom had been handed off. Of course, Itobi hadn't been informed of how much protection she was under. There was a risk that if she'd acted too secure, it might let the kidnap her. I think Tatiano had the right idea. Tatiano snorted quietly. Maybe I mean he's a great detective. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But you know how many irreverent things that there are to consider. Again, Ken ignored him. It didn't matter if nobody else understood. Kano had faith in Tatiano as both a detective and an individual. He had first witnessed Tatiano's brilliance during a standoff at a financial company three years earlier. A man had shut himself in an office Splashing gasoline everywhere and threatening to set the place ablaze. While the others hesitated, Tatiano unfortunately doused himself with gasoline and strode into the building. Ooh. I wouldn't know that. But he managed to talk the man down and secure the seat. Why? Mm -hmm. The others had been all struck by Tatiana's actions, and Kano at the time had been content to be a run of the bell policeman and found it quite inspiring. Again, it must be a Japanese thing. Save. Still, you know. So she a moment under his breath. As great a detective as Tatiano is, it's not like anyone else in the world has ever heard of him. I suppose Don Kano said so. Only time, only, only time anyone ever hears a cop's name is if he's caught up in some scandal or killed in line of duty, said the banana. I mean, doesn't really seem fair, does it? Kano just shrugged. It was a strange definition of unfair, really. I mean, you've got celebrity chefs and celebrity hairdressers and stuff. So how come no celebrity gums you, you know? But please, can't you just focus on what you were doing here? Kano rubbed his eyes and turned his attention back to the dummy. What's the matter? Didn't sleep? Not enough, I guess. Did you eat? Didn't have time. Between bringing in supplies for the base of operations, ready within vehicles, better copy hundreds of documents and various other tasks, could have barely slept the previous night and hadn't gotten a meal in either. What have you been doing? The camera popped on your chest, saving up my energy for the day. So you were sleeping. Kind of gave a bribe. Choked through his partner's lack of shame. There he is. Kuzo's oh. voice trapped suddenly through Kano's safe face. A man in his twenties wearing a sleeveless red jacket. He's carrying a garbage bag. A young man had emerged from the crowd, about 50 feet from where Tommy was standing. 
He threw toward her a sinister look at his face. He didn't match Tommy's description, but his kid had felt a jolt of nerves all the same. Maybe the kidnapper had hired some young street punk to snatch the ransom payment. That old guy, what do you think, Gaino? Sissiama whispered. Yeah. I think he's got to be. This was it. Kenna swallowed a lump in his throat. <clears> throat> he bent his knees, ready to act fast. Blood rushed to his leg muscles. Banishing the stiffness that had begun to take him control. Could this be the culprit? Or perhaps... The young man tried to snatch the briefcase from Tommy, but he clung to it with different strength. It was him. Uh, the, 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 sorry, I probably pushed the wrong one, man. The, the, the detective rushed in. Whoa, hey, what the hell? The young man cried out frantically and tried to dart away, but the officers closed in, forcing him boldly to the ground. Target secured. Oh, jeez, I think we've got another suspect on the scene. Eek. He's taken the ransom. Kudos. Hysterics made Kato spin around. Sure enough, a far enough the man was spreading away, a tesha case in hand. The mob of the detectives scrambled to pursue. Before Kano could react, most of them had run off, leaving him to look after the original suspect. Ooh. What should I do with this guy, sir? <sighs> he might have some connection to the kidnapper. Should I bring him in? Huh? Oh, sure. That'd be swell. I'm on it. With the help of one of the remaining detectives, Kenna brought the subject back to the Shibuya Pretext. Look, how many times do we have to go through this? Cut crap. In the tech room, the young man, the other name is Ashi Endo, steadfastly insistent on his innocence. Why don't you try to steal that case? Kenna watched Ashi's face intently. Like I said, it looked heavy, so I was just trying to help her out. <laughs> it wasn't inconceivable that a young guy would want to help a young girl out. But he somehow had just been standing there, hardly in desperate need of assistance. She hadn't set the case down, so I figured there had to be something important inside. An entry from Kano's Dick Diary. Oh. <laughs> Dick Dictum, 20, hashtag 25. When the tongue slips, grab it and yank out the truth. Classic advice for a questioning. Something important you say, such as? How the heck would I know, Edgy Spat? He huffed and slumped back into his chair. 
The standard textbook back and forth had been going on for nearly an hour. Kano didn't mind chasing down criminals, but well and good. But questioning suspects was another key part of the job. Plenty of opposite work went into cracking a case. Once again, he had actually explained that he'd be doing starting from the beginning. What he'd been And Kino finally emerged from the integration room for a short break. He learned that there had been some progress on the case at the crime scene. What the police hadn't been able to determine yet, however, was whether or not Maria was safe. Fighting back his anxiety, Kano consulted his dick diary. Dick dick dumb. Haste makes waste. Okay. He felt that his tension subsided. Remembering the right maxim always helped it. Help. Oh, the right maxim always helped. It was like casting a magic spell. Kato returned to confront Echi once more. You were there to act as a distraction to mess up the investigation, weren't you? Huh? Echi looked a bit dumbfounded. What are you all about? Dick Dictum, hashtag 55. The truth hungers to be free. You hungry? Well, someone cuts. cuts it on, if you like. That she nodded silently. Oh, noodles. She ate one more because he had two dozen biscuits, so he looked like he hadn't eaten in a while. It's very yummy. Alright then, spill it. But he does want to spill a cut it on. <laughs> I know. <laughs> What's this guy after? I just shrugged. I don't, I don't know. He murmured a thick slice of egg. Oh, egg laden pork between his teeth. How many accomplices do you have? Kano asked. But that she just shook his head as he inhaled the food. Oh, don't want to be doing that. You'll choke. Residingly, Kano slipped through his flip, flip through his notebook once more. Let's see. Number 115. Use the lights to your advantage, the dick dictum said. Or hashtag 115. As the minutes ticked past, he found himself referring to his book again and again, trying a dozen different methods to tease out whatever his suspect might be hiding. The experience began to feel strangely surreal. There are two voices echoing hollowly in the interrogation room. Oh, the old light. Eventually, Kano looked at the clock and realized that the question had been going on. Whoa, nearly five hours. I tried that old thing. He still, had been he still hadn't made any headway. What was he supposed to do next? Tito would know, but he. Sh but. Tito would know, but. But. He sure didn't. Still, he was determined to do whatever he could to keep the victim and her family safe. Grinning his teeth in frustration, he pursued the dick. <laughs> the dick diary, lack of a scripture. Number. Hashtag 116. The monotonous questioning was clearly tiring out out. His eyelids drooped, but that was beginning to get heavy. Number hashtag 117. Get them when they're tired. Kenner's eyes gleamed. You were part of some criminal gang, huh? Oh, he's got. <laughs> Actually, his head slumped forward heavily. Nodding off, he was basically the same as nodding yes, right? <laughs> Mr. Kuze, I did it. The young guy we grabbed at the head of side, he finally confessed to the crime. Or did he? Oh, which... Hello. 
I think it was one year's birthday. Because I laugh was in disbelief. He was spending that prayer in the math man here. Huh? Can I clutch his cell phone? Dumbstruck. Listen, why don't you? Ah! Oh, look, just wait there, it hates you, okay? No, it can't be. Ah! Uh -uh. I think I'm going to read that. Can I tend to his resignation? Guess he's not cut out to be a detective after all. He thought to himself. He dropped the dick diary on his desk as he left the Shibuya pretend for the last time. Oh. Oh. <laughs> What a bad end. Oh dear. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm reading. Kenneth's right here, you can avoid the bad end by making proper decisions. In another Kenneth story, for a detailed hit, Check the tip by underlining the band end. Title. Kano had every reason to suspect that she had her. The rest of him turned out to be a mistake. If she hadn't approached, he told me this wouldn't have happened. Alright. Uh, we'll do that. We might do that next time. We'll have to see. If I get a few people that watch this, then, yeah. I make a choice that keeps him from going up to her. If you do that, then Kano won't be able to have a chance to arrest him. And things should play it differently. So was that first one? Oh, yeah. We're gonna end it here now. <sighs> Thanks for watching. Bye bye, and if you like, p p please do a. No, I don't know why. But if you want to watch something, and if you want me to do some more stuff, please leave a like. That's all. All I ask, leave a like. Thank you, bye bye. Catch you later.